In a typical light GA aircraft, a single point of failure can take out the entire electrical system. A typical backup plan involves flying an emergency approach solely by iPad. But have you practiced it? You should. Mike and I simulated that failure on an approach into Green Bay, Wisconsin. With the electrical system offline, we were left with only the iPad for navigation. The G5s also stayed alive with up to four hours of battery backup. Yep, that's exactly the way to do it, is load the procedure into the flight plan like this. Yeah. And it'll actually give you an HSI. You probably want a GPS approach. Yeah, I was just going to say... Uh, uh, let's do it from... Yeah, let's go from... MI. All right, so that now you have an HSI here too. Yeah. But right now it's uh, it's got it's this lag. Well, you can't see where I'm pointing. It's the lag, the magenta lag on there, oh, from sure. Amid to Hamro. Okay. So you want to choose direct to Amid. Amid. So, so you can just tap on it. Uh, activate. You could you could tap on him on Amid. There we go. Oh yeah, activate approach will do it too. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. Now you you've got a yeah an HSI. And it, like it feels kind of like a normal approach. Yeah. Synthetic vision there. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's why it's a good idea to practice this once or twice. Because if you have an electrical failure, this is what you're doing. Yeah. Synthetic vision here. The iPad only knows your track; it doesn't know your heading. Yeah. So that can be a little bit misleading. Like the picture that it's showing you out the window, if there's a if there's a crosswind, isn't quite accurate. Yeah. It's like if you try to fly this all the way to the ground, or or anyway, when you break out on an approach like this, the runway is not going to be exactly where it is in the synthetic vision if there's any crosswind. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's let's do that actually. I, so I've got the weather set like all the way to the ground. Let's just try and land. Okay. So this is a this is the approach we've got to make. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> People's lives depend on it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can see this is actually kind of not that hard when you get your iPad set up right for it. Yeah. But it's just awkward, right? Like It's, it's, it's very awkward, yeah. So I really want to set a heading bug on, on the iPad. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I wish there was a way. Well, I bet you there probably is. is there for what? To set up one of the instruments on the bottom as cross-track? Uh, yeah, there might be. Almost at our turn here. Fiddle with it then. Point nine. Yeah, it won't give you any turn anticipation. No, so you, I know. You can do that on your own if you want. Just prior to the final approach fix, we lowered the gear using the Aero's emergency freefall system. 
It's simple in the arrow, but if you fly something with a more involved manual system, lower the gear earlier, before you get busy on the approach, and increase your power settings to compensate. Actually, it looks like the iPad is picking up your heading, just because your G5 says 253 heading and like 248 track right now. Uh, so it must know it must know you're heading. Huh, yeah. It wouldn't, I mean, you know, like a Stratus only knows ground track. Uh, certainly if it's just running off of your internal GPS, it wouldn't know you're heading either. Right. But X-Plane must be sending it. Huh, that's interesting. And there's probably some, I don't know, if you compare it to pair it's like a g1000 or something and it gets all the all that info too i'm not sure yeah hmm but yeah. Still, I mean, you could see you could see the runway out the window here that's kind of nice yeah a, a virtual window the virtual window yeah <laughs> everything turns yellow yeah <laughs> getting close to the ground also GPS altitude on there so it's not going to be the same thing as your barometric altitude on the G5 uh, on, on the no no on no. the on the no iPad. on the iPad yeah. yeah yeah I'm not even looking really looking no, at I didn't think the so, altitude on that right. and ground speed of course right Twelve hundred for eleven hundred. Cross track error would be good to have here because I'm not sure what it's got for CDI scaling at all. There, it sure doesn't look very sensitive. Mm -hmm. The runway's pretty far off to the left here. Yeah, it is. All right, we got to got to make a landing here. There's no going. Oh, this. that's right. I was supposed to follow it down, wasn't I? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm curious how well the synthetic vision works here in X plane, but like, sidestep over to where the runway is. Yeah, the, the back so and forth weird. here is weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't help that it's on the yoke either. <laughs> yeah, and it, tur it turns when you turn the yoke. Yeah, exactly. Probably lags just a little bit too. Oh, I see the edge of the runway. <laughs> There, I think I made ground contact. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, we're sliding all over. It's icy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is kind of fun. I like to do that on like IPCs or even flight reviews sometimes just because a lot of times people haven't done it and they'll say like if i have an electrical failure my backup that's is what just i'll do and approach yeah with the ipad yeah but well, let's do it yeah well, yeah that wasn't easy so, so, but uh yeah no i know <laughs> i know like just looking at the ipad screen it doesn't look hard but just the the just the things being in different spots like that's weird yeah mm -hmm, exactly yeah so it wasn't pretty but we made it on the ground in zero zero conditions using only the ipad Mike made a great point early in the process about cross-track error. You can add it as a field in ForeFlight, and it is pretty helpful. The ForeFlight HSI doesn't have the same sensitivity as an HSI normally would on a WASP-based GPS approach. The HSI here made it look like we were only barely off course on final, but the synthetic vision showed about the equivalent of a normal full-scale deflection right of course. 
Having the cross-track error visible would have clarified that fact, and so setting it as an iPad data field is something I'm going to teach from now on.